Welcome to class, scoundrels. If you are back returning to class, welcome back. If you are a new scoundrel and you would like to get extra credit for this lecture, feel free to hit the subscribe button and I guarantee you will pass. Uh, first of all, thanks to G2A for sponsoring the channel. Second of all, we are going to be covering PvP and the basics of combat today. And all of these graphics I have made myself, um, so I hope they are helpful for you and help you gain some understanding behind how damage is applied in EVE Echoes, uh, as well as some of the basics of combat systems. The first of which we're going to look at is the way in which t the combat systems apply damage, or the chance to hit. And this is not accounting for enemy ship movements, which we'll cover a little bit later. We are purely looking at a stationary target. The three main, or well, the three only weapon types right now, are turrets, missiles, and drones. And turrets include everything that is not missiles and drones, and that's things like lasers, railguns, autocannons etc. Uh, for so starting off with turrets because they're the most complicated. They have a 100% chance to hit at their optimal range. If you go and look at the stats of a turret, so you look at a stat of a laser or a railgun, it will give you an optimal range. And that optimal range denotes the range at which it will have a 100% chance to hit if the target is stationary. It will also give you something called a fall-off range. And that fall-off range denotes the chance to hit, or denotes the, the distance by which, if you travel that far away from the optimal range, the chance to hit will start to reduce. Missiles are simple. Within the range of your missile, so all missiles have a a range at which they can be fired. If they can catch their target, they will hit 100% of the time. So within their range, they have 100% chance to hit. This is why you often see uh, missiles have a slightly longer range than the majority of other weapons. That is because outside of this range, they have no chance to hit, unlike turrets and drones, which have that fall-off range. And speaking of drones, it's a little bit more simple to explain now we explain turrets, but essentially you have a control range, the, the, the distance of which the drone has to be from your ship in order, in order for you to be able to control the drone. And then the drones operate similarly to turrets in the sense that they have a uh, an optimal range at which they can fire at and then they also have fall off ranges as well so they all operate in a very similar way to turrets so i hope that's pretty self-explanatory given that we've talked about turrets just previously so we're now going to talk about some advanced theory of damage application this is going to be coming down to things like ship speed as well as signature radius now signature radius is what i want to talk about first of all because it is one of the most important factors that affects all damage application types. Um, signature radius is essentially a target around your ship. The bigger your ship, the bigger your signature radius, and therefore the bigger the, the bigger the target you are. But also some fittings will increase the signature radius on your ship as well. For instance, an active micro warp drive has a very high signature radius boost, and it's going to make you an easier target to hit. So just be aware, you should have a look at, the, at how much an individual fitting increases your signature radius, because it also makes you easier to track and easier to apply damage to. And signature radius radius acts as a multiplier in terms of damage application with every single damage type or every single single type of damage application in the game. So I'm going to start off with one of the more complicated um, uh, kind of discussions because this involved turret, involves turrets and it's also, also going to apply to drones and it's going to be talking about tracking speed and radial velocity. Now the very basics of tracking speed are that it is essentially defines how quickly your turret can move. Um, so the higher the tracking speed, the, the the more likely it is your turret is going to be able to keep up with and apply damage to fast ships. Um, but the thing that you need to consider is if, if, a turret, if, if you're moving directly towards a turret, it doesn't need to have a tracking speed because it's not moving. So we need to talk about angular velocity. It doesn't matter about ship speed because that ship speed is useless when applied in, the, in an incorrect uh, setting. Angular velocity is shown by this little graph, uh, this little graphic over to the left. Those two dots are actually moving at exactly the same speed, but the angular velocity of the red dot is much higher because it is closer and orbiting its target in a closer pattern. So therefore, the angular velocity of the red dot is much higher, meaning a turret is going to have to have a much higher tracking speed to actually keep up with and apply damage to the red dot, whereas the blue dot, despite traveling at the same speed, is going to be much easier to track because it is not moving around the target very quickly. And I think, I think a good way to explain this is think of turrets having a field of view. So I'm looking at a turret right now, and I've got my field of view. If a target moves across my field of view very quickly, I'm going to have to be very quick to keep up with it and apply damage. And that's going to be, if it's moving across very quickly, it's usually very close. But if I extend my field of view out a little bit further till I say, you know, to say 30 kilometers away from my ship, if that target is then moving 30 kilometers away from my ship, but at the same speed, it will cross my field of view much more slowly, meaning it's much easier for me to track and apply damage to it. And that's the very basic concept of angular velocity, which is why we, why we talk about speed tanking. Uh, it's much better to be in a close orbit for the most part because it's going to be harder for turrets to track you because you're moving across their
their field of view that much more rapidly and you have a much higher angular velocity. Let's now talk about missiles. There are two main factors in missile damage application, explosion velocity and explosion radius. The, the very basic TLDR is the quicker the explosion velocity and the smaller the explosion radius, the easier it is for you to apply damage to small ships. And the way that I'm going to descri describe this is think of an explosion as a sphere, okay? Um, that sphere, the larger the sphere, the more spread out the damage is in, as a volume. And the, the explosions come from a small sphere and they, they radiate, radiate out to their maximum radius. The quicker that explosion, if I'm traveling through the area that is exploding, the more damage that's going to catch up with me and, apply, and is going to be applied to me. The slower the explosion, the less damage I'm going to have as I make my way through that explosion radius. It's a pretty basic concept, but essentially the higher the signature radius, um, the easier it is to apply damage with ships. And the faster you are, um, the, the higher explosion velocity and the, the smaller explosion radius you're going to have to apply damage effectively and with drones they have an extra um, facet they, they apply damage in the same way the turrets so everything that we talked about with tracking speed applies to drones but they also need to keep up with their target so they need to be quick as well so they need to be constantly looking to maintain their optimal range and that is why uh, the speed of the drone matters very much so and specifically with drones you know with large medium and small the smaller the drone the quicker it's going to be uh, but with the lower damage. So it's going to have better tracking speed and it's going to be quicker, so it's going to be able to keep up with frigates and destroyers that much more readily, but it will have lower damage to compensate. Medium and large drones have higher damage, but they're going to have lower tracking speeds and, and lower uh, movement speeds, which means they're going to be very unlikely to constantly apply damage to things like frigates. So that's some extra advanced topics when it comes to... Um, damage application. Let's talk a little bit now about damage types and what they actually do. So again, this is going to be super quick. There are four damage types in EVE. There is electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Electromagnetic is very good versus shields, but not so good versus armor. Explosive is very good versus armor, but not so good versus shields. And thermal and kinetic are in the middle. There's some sort of midway points with thermal being better versus shields, but not so good versus armor. Kinetic being better versus armor, but not so good versus shields. So all weapons have a split of damage types, and you can see it on their stat pages. Now, I'm not going to explain to you which weapon is good versus which type of defense. You'll be able to work it out from the little sort of key on the left hand side there with the damage types that you're seeing on your screen. But lasers are mostly electromagnetic with a bit of thermal. Rail guns are a split between kinetic and thermal, but with mostly being kinetic. Um, auto cannons are a split between uh, thermal, kinetic, and explosive, but with the sort of the emphasis being on explosive and thermal. Uh, decomposers are mostly kinetic with a bit of uh, explosive. Missiles are 25% of each, so they have a completely even split across all four damage types. And drones are 100% depending on the type of drone that you pick. And you can have a drone that corresponds to each damage type, which makes drones the most adaptable, adaptable weapon in the game because you can apply the different type of size drone depending on which type of ship you're facing. But you can also apply the different type of damage depending on which type of defense you're facing. Let's talk a little bit about the basic etiquette of a PvP setup right now. And then after this, we're going to have a brief um, video of a PvP tackle that we did in my little PvP group. So this is not uncovering everything. There is lots more to learn when it comes to PvP, but I wanted to give you a basic starter overview to allow you to uh, kind of explore PvP on your own sense. You can do this with one person. You can be both the, the, the tackle and the DPS yourself, but you're going to be a bit of sort of a, a, a jack of all trades, master of none in that sense. And you might struggle to actually find kills unless you're catching someone completely unaware. So in general, in your in your PvP fleet, you're going to have a tackle and you're going to have a DPS. The tackle is usually going to be a fast ship like a frigate, um, and its role is to scout uh, and prevent the target from warping or stalling them using either things like warp disruptors or stasis weber fires. And usually that frigate is going to be fast and it's going to stall and it's going to speed tank to try and prevent itself from getting killed. The DPS, the role is to wait jump in once the target has been engaged and then blow that target up whilst they're being tackled by your tackle. Um, there is a bit of etiquette, that you, there's a couple of rules that you might want to follow which will help get you started. These are not all of the rules to PvP and actually I challenge the people in the comments to come out with some extra rules for PvP that I've not been able to include in this slide. So in general the DPS waits on the other side of the gate, the entrance, um, the, the system entrance gate in order to prevent a local spike. So your tackle will go into the system that you're intending to hit, that local will go up by one or two depending on how many tackles you've got and once they've found a target the dps then warps in it 
it's to make sure you're not spooking everybody in that system by massively increasing the local uh, numbers. And obviously, when the local numbers go up, if you're if you're scared of PvP, you're going to have to be on alert if local numbers are going up. You want to identify whether the target is likely to get support. For instance, if you're in a station system in Nullsec, you can be damn sure if you're trying to engage someone, they're going to get corp support. So be aware of that and look at the number of targets in local. If there's a very high population in local, it's going to be much more risky to engage in PvP. Choose likely locations when you warp into a system. Anomalies and belts are a good place to start. Always check the corp tags of who you're attacking. You do not want to start a corp war accidentally by attacking someone that is likely to engage in a full-scale corp war because you have your corp tag and you randomly attacked them. And also know your limits. Don't go and engage a full fleet of four people when you are two. Uh, be aware of the types of ships that you're good against and only fly what you can afford to lose, which I break I break that rule in this next PvP video that I'm going to show you. But don't be sad if you get blown up because you should only, you should only ever fly what you can afford to lose in EVE. Um, and that's something that you should be aware of, especially when even doing PvE as well. If you, if you get caught out in PvE and you lose your ship and you can't afford to replace it, there's something that you, know, you have to be very aware of. So we're going to go through a little video now of of uh, uh, an engagement that I had with my friends and essentially we tackled a ship and we blew it up. So I kind of want to go through that now with you guys. So this is a really simple example. You just saw me warp into a system called Sir-F7. I had been alerted by my two members in my crew, uh, Evil Eyes and Simbad, that they had tackled a target and they called out the location directly to me, which was one of the planets that they managed to tackle the target at as they sort of forced him out of an anomaly and then sort of followed him up to a planet. One thing to be aware of as a tackle, if the enemy warps out, look at the uh, vector. So look at the direction that they warped out in and guess which landmark in the universe they would have likely warped to. It's usually fairly obvious um, sometimes the those those particular uh, structures stack and it can be difficult to find out but you can always look at the direction that the enemy warps out in and make a good guess as to where they've headed so if you need to follow them up and tackle more so we got the call that the enemy had been tackled and we were to warp in and we were to pro provide the dps and you can see i immediately switch over to pvp enemy um, and make sure that i uh, sorry pvp all and make sure that i immediately lock um, the caracal navy issue which you can see here he did have a stabber warp in but that stabber immediately warped out once it realized that we had a full fleet engaging him and as soon as we had him locked he could not warp and we just pumped the dps i i sort of threw my uh both my um uh, damage control systems on my damage amplifying systems on i popped all of my missiles and we essentially took out this navy caracal issue with relative ease and this is kind of what pvp is about really it's a little bit like a prey game a hunter game it's a bit like fishing in the sense that you, you're going to gang up you're going to you, you're going to find a fish sometimes and sometimes that fish is going to hook and you're going to be able to land the, the damage most of it is about essentially uh finding the target sometimes that target will escape sometimes that fish will get off the hook but once you do hook a fish it's about reeling it in that reeling it in is bringing the damage in and, and, and taking that target out and it's very much like a, a you know like a hunt essentially you are stalking a target sometimes that target is going to slip your grasps if you can lock it down and get in, that's when you can deliver the killing blow. Like a lot of PvP is about scouting. A lot of PvP is is trying to find the ideal target um, and, and, and knowing when you can win. An instance in this instance, we we locked a uh, very very um, high value ship in the form of Caracal Navy issue, and we and we blew him up. And again, that's the very simple one two aspect of uh, PvP in this game. Have someone scout and tackle. Now that can be yourself as well. And then essentially you engage, you lock them down, and you DPS them out. And that's what you, we did in this particular example. So that's the very basics of PvP combat. I hope you guys go and enjoy it responsibly. Oh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe.